Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So in this video I'm going to focus on the bull tracks because it's a really really fun tab with a lot of potential just make some quite funky shit. However, one it's massively overwhelming but the thing I've learned already with this is you kind of do need a point. You need to think what am I going to be using this for? Now in this video that's not really the case. Um, I built just something random and weird at Finch Farm which we're going to go to in a second. Um, but I just want to demonstrate what the different bits do because it can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, obviously there is some utility beyond the actual bull tracks. I know so many people have mentioned that and it is definitely the case, but these will make great aqueducts um, in a settlement or just kind of decoration on themselves. Um, I'm actually quite excited with the idea of actually having a greenhouse with basically just little kind of aqueducts going around the outside. But beyond that as well, there's quite fun from actually making actual contraptions I guess um, but you know for example the obvious one is doorways so you can have a settlement that's activated by these um, any kind of automatic machine that uses the, uh, the steel balls to actually kind of send it through a cycle that kind of thing it's quite fun but let me just quickly just go over the various um, elements of the tab first also before I do actually it merges very naturally with the elevators um, and the scaffolding especially. Scaffolding is really useful for this tab. Because basically you can end up having the bull tab things go actually, uh, the, the bull tracks going through the scaffolding frames, um, but allows you to actually have walkways. I've kind of done it, like the thing I've made at Finch Farm is an absolute monstrosity. <laughs> and also, it because I didn't really have a point other than demonstrating anything, it just kind of activates two different circuits, which I just wanted to kind of show you the various things. So it is, is a pointless little monstrosity, but it, you know, it, it, it does what it's meant to do, yeah. Um, but I will be doing videos later down the line on specific um, mechanisms. And I imagine places like um, Fallout Settlements and Fallout are going to be abound by these within a few weeks of people just making amazing, much better than I could make. I'll make pretty looking things that maybe aren't as technically impressive as some things other people do. Right, anyway. Just quickly go through them. So, there's three tabs in this. So it's straight, curves, and miscellaneous. Now, initially... It can seem almost gimmicky, you know, the different lengths and sizes and all that jazz. If, if you think about it, it's actually, um, one thing I noticed when making mine, and a lot of you probably noticed as well, is you reach, if you start on a high position, you reach the bottom a lot quicker than you expect. So you have to actually factor in the various lengths and heights you're using. For example, in the straight section, it's got this more extreme, out, I don't know, 45 degrees or something. And then what? 30 maybe what, 20 or something no, not very good but you get my point it's like if i start here with this i'm gonna almost keep it and it's gonna go on for quite a long distance whether if i start it on a kind of much higher angle it's going to sharply drop down and they may seem kind of obvious but when you've actually got a struck when you're actually thinking right i want to make this it allows you to make use of the space that's where the curved one is useful as well. This is, you know, it looks like it might be something gimmicky. Oh, you know, it's kind of make it so it's just all these winding curvy bits. But there's a point to these. You know, if I'm starting over here, say I want to say build something in this small section here, I'm going to need something like this or it's just going to end up going out and I just won't have the space for it. Same if I want something to maybe go over a long distance. For whatever reason, maybe I have a mechanism starting there and I want it to go around. I have to actually factor in what pieces I'm using. Um, it's a little bit weird. I'm going to build some cool stuff, don't you worry, but it's great fun, this. Um, so, in the, obviously, the first, the straight one is divided into just various angles. This one, um, obviously, the actual length of the actual curve, but also their curve left and curve right. Uh, something to pay attention to as well. When you're building, you can just kind of, like, just casually grab one, but then you realise, oh, yeah, they're actually going different ways. Because you'll find that while you're doing it, you might accidentally just have one just go up for whatever reason, so... Um, for example, this one here is very, very useful as well for just if I want to kind of go almost go vertically down. I imagine it'll be quite cool when actually with one of these just going down a massive tower. Um, and then the MISC tab is the one where you get a lot of utility. Uh, now, this is actually probably the most useful one that I didn't use at all in my Lex one, um, in the thing I made at Finch Farm, though I really should have. Because I was having trouble with the balls uh, falling off the track when they would go on to different sections. Um, this, the whole point of this is to basically just catch them. That, that, that's that's pretty much the point of this. Oop, that way. There we go. So, say you have one that's kind of going there for whatever. A switch is the prime example. And you want it to drop down. This will catch it. So it'll stop it flying off to the side. All very useful. 
Um, then these are the funnels. Uh, these are if you just want the ball to drop straight down. Uh, they're really useful. I've got one on my starting point. It's worth noting, and um, I learned that the hard way, is that if you have too many balls going in it at the same time, they get stuck really easily. You know, this is a pretty basic physics ending. Um, so that's just something to bear in mind. You know, this is if you want it to drop down uh, just vertically onto another track um, further down and then you've got this version here which basically just allows you to just go down a, a level. Uh, I think I imagine these be useful before you're thinking oh what's the point. Uh, say you've got a track that's say going that way and you want to go this way at a sharp angle uh, it's actually probably easy to put one of those down rather than trying to curve it potentially um, especially if you don't want the curved bit to for example send you off at a weird like for example if you see if I'm going there I still have to curve it round. Um, it just might—it just a different way. Basically, it's all about kind of the situation. And plus, obviously, when you're using these, you still want it to look cool and weird. So it might be fun to have these in. I tried to—I did um, put these in. This one's really useful. Um, this is the merge track, and then you have an electronic version of it. Well, this one is if you're basically if you've got two mechanisms for whatever reason, two balls coming up on two sides, and then you want to move them onto the same track for whatever reason. And then this one here is if you want to split off. I've used one of the splitting ones because I have two mechanisms on my ball track. But it's all good fun. Uh, these are for... They actually release the balls. So basically if you put one here like this and the balls snap in. You know, you don't... I've been a bit lazy with mine and I've actually just used one of those because I couldn't be asked to get the power all the way up to the top floor of the elevator. Um, and then you can have a powered version as well. Um, I want slight, and I'm trying to figure out how to work it out, is that these inevitably, unless you have it, you'll see when I got the top one here, so unless I have it, say, one of these quite high, you're still going to have to attach it to one of these, so it's, for example, on my top of my track, it kind of looks a little bit weird, as it's just where um, my actual ball track is floating off the ground a little bit, because I just couldn't get it because it was actually on metal, um, I couldn't get it at the right angle, but you'll see. But it's it's very it's very useful, and that allows you to actually control. Then you can actually have an electronic one as well, so that way you can just have a switch. Um, I would actually recommend attaching this to something that pulses, so it doesn't release all the balls at the same time. Right, so then we've got the actual, obviously, still balls as well. Um, now, this is the track supports. You can be using these a lot. A lot, a lot. For just actually attaching them down, you can actually then grab them and then lower them down to the ground. So I'm holding X right now, by the way, and I'm holding X and using L1. So you can just do that and actually get them to the height you want. They're obviously really useful for actually just kind of other supports as well, which is grand. And then these ones. These are, I think, the ones, the best switches. We have got other switches we can use. But these are the two which are the best ones, I think. Um, and the ones that will actually be used in circuits more often. Because basically this one here turns it on and off. So I can have basically a ball going, you say, across this house. And I don't know. That's the one you'd use to open a gate, for example. Um, and then this one pulses something if you wanted, I don't know, turn on a trap. Or maybe you wanted to pulse uh, a gate temporarily. That kind of thing. Anything that's basically powered. So those are the ball track things. Now I'm um, just going to add some things that kind of, obviously alongside, you've got the elevators and obviously the scaffolding. In the power tab, we've got a couple of switches which are useful. This one, it's, it's quite hit, difficult to get it at the right angle. I've seen people use it, but you can actually have it so a ball drops off and just kind of bounces in those. I have tried it and they don't seem to go through it. That's a shame. I was hoping I could have it so the ball would kind of go through that target and keep on rolling. That doesn't seem to work, but it does bounce. It bounces into, bounces into it, basically. And you've got different kinds. So you've got one which pulses. And then you've got one which turns it on and off. Then the miscellaneous tab. You've got these. I have actually used one of these in mine. Uh, basically what happens is, is once I've turned this on, it's actually got... Yes, yeah, so you can see the little uh, the bumper there. Um, and basically, again, like the other one, it doesn't, I thought it would fall through the hip hoop. It doesn't. It bounces. So basically it'll kind of roll along and you'll see it'll bounce on it and then I have it bouncing onto another track. Um... It might actually fall off the track. I did that a few times. And you've got one, obviously, on its own. Or you've got one that you can actually attach to a side of a building. As I said, this is just a broad overview. I'm going to show you something cool right now and show them in action. And then later down the line, I'm going to try and think of quite a lot of fun stuff uh, to actually make with this. I'm really excited about having security systems 
um, and maybe turning on just pointlessly complex uh, machinery. All right, let's go to Finch Farm. Hopefully the Finches aren't too pissed off at me for ruining it a little bit. But anyway, I'll talk to you guys in a sec. Right, so we're at Finch Farm. Now, before I show you this, remember, this is just me just trying to demonstrate all of the weird and wonderful parts that I can. Um, it doesn't have any point. Um, it looks a bit of a mess as well. But anyway, let, let me show you. Let me show you. So here it is. Just like a giant roller coaster, doesn't it? Um, but you're just, you can see where I've got things. I've um, deliberately um, put the bathtubs as just kind of somewhere to catch the balls at the bottom. I've got a cannon there for well, mortar for reasons. And then a paintball gun, conveniently attached to some stocks. Mm. Um, note about the paintball guns as well, actually, is they act like traps. So these won't fire like a turret, so it doesn't just turn on and then it shoots at enemies. This will actually fire at just continuously, and also they have to be fixed afterwards. Oh, it's going all grey. One second. So I deliberately have a firework mortar set up for this exact purpose. Left, I do have one more. So, boom. Right, there we go. So, we're going to take old Jake here. Nope, Jake, come here. Can you just do us a favour, Jake? Can you just get in the stocks there? Because you were very, very naughty when you tried to bloody well join the forge. Right. As you can see, so I've got my can. I just put a load of junk in there. Um, also, a note on the junk mortars as well is clicking on this doesn't activate it, doesn't turn it on. What this does is it changes the angle it's facing and it basically just cycles through. So if you're curious about kind of if you want to change the direction this is facing, the angle, that jazz. So let's keep it about that. Um, and I've got my various tracks. I've got my basketball hoop. Um, it's highly likely the ball will bounce off. Um, I could actually put a track in the nah, because if I have to put a, one of the angled tracks, it's going to go away. Is Jake in there? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Right. Right, let's just go up here. Hey, Nick. So you can see I've got the scaffold in. I've got an elevator, which naturally I forgot to bring down. Oh, I do love the elevators, don't you? Oh, I love them. Love them. There right, we go. I'm going to try and catch everything so you guys don't miss out. This is what I was talking about, see, because um, I hadn't factored this part in. Um, so this is floating. But this is just a demonstration. So I put two there. Jake's still in. Right, okay, let's do this. Okay, okay, I'm excited, I'm excited. Bum, 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 bum. Boop, 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 boop. Right, they're coming down. Yep, 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 they're coming down. Ooh. So they're gonna go to the track switch here. I'm actually gonna go down here, because it's easy to see. And it's gonna activate. And then, woohoo! So that one. Yeah! We missed the other one. Uh, right, um, let's just turn that off. But anyway, that was my incredibly complex anticlimactic. Stop shooting him. There we go. Breaks after a while. Right, so that's my incredibly complex and slightly anticlimactic um, contraption. I had actually great fun making this. But you can see my point. Like, let's just kind of go over it for a second. Like, that wasn't a very complex circuit. I deliberately made it bigger. But you can just see the amount of space this took up. Um, obviously, I could have squished this down into a lot smaller area um, using the various tracks. But I wanted to kind of demonstrate just how the angles go, how things move around. Um, and as you can see, it should have caught my balls there. And one second. Uh, oh, I'm getting stuck. Eh, there we go. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. That was just my little fuck around, I guess. I'll give you an overview of just the, the weird and wonderful bullshit you can make. Um, I will actually be making, I said, actual contraptions and stuff. I've got some ideas for doorways, trap doors, ludicrously um, complex traps. It's going to be great fun. All right. As always, follow me on Twitter, at no response. I am really curious to see some of the shit you guys make. Mainly because I am fucking terrible. <laughs> with turf circuits i am awful i make pretty buildings i don't understand all of this um i am going to try and do the logic gates at some point by the way also i'm going to pick up all this shit right anyway i'll talk to you lovely people soon take care